Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Hello Monday. As you can see in the background, I'm not at home. I'm actually in Texas. I drove here to spend some time with my kid Courtney. Tomorrow is her birthday. I wanted to see her and spend some special time with her. Uh, so, this week I am on the road again uh, doing some fun things. Uh, now, last week I was not on the Snippet Lady page much at all. Uh, I did not post any teachings. My internet was down. I think they've got the tower fixed now, so I didn't have a very strong Wi-Fi signal to upload. In fact, for most of the time, I couldn't even get on my iPad and make my internet go to websites. That's how weak the signal was. Uh, so, with that said, also, we've been doing some outside work around the house, getting some uh, brick laid and getting ready to do some landscaping. So I've been really, really busy last week as well. So the last snippet, if you want to call it teaching, posting that I did was Friday, uh, September the 4th. So today will be my first live teaching. Now, let me get started with this. I've mentioned this book in one of my other videos and I've sent uh, a little message or two to some of the folks that I talk to pretty often on uh, Facebook private messenger and this is the book that I have I'm done reading it and I've already read another book but the blood nothing blood but the blood of Jesus by JD Myers guys I tell you this is such an eye-opening book and it's not a really big thick heavy to understand uh, burdensome uh, read uh, I'll give you the table of contents it says part one defining sin did you know we don't really understand the true meaning of sin. I, I love this book. It was so eye-opening. And then he talks about scriptures on sin. Part two, the law. Defining the law and scriptures on the law. Defining sacrifice. Part three, sacrifice. Defining sacrifice and scriptures on sacrifice. And this is one of the best parts of the book is part four, the scapegoat. Defining the scapegoat and scriptures on scapegoat. And then it's num part five is blood defining blood and scriptures on blood and then he finishes up with the precious blood of jesus uh this is such a wonderful book i highly recommend it he is one of the first uh authors that i have ever read that actually goes into and supports some teachings that i've done a couple of years ago even three years back i taught about how in genesis and this is so important i pray you're listening to me right now it is so important that we build a firm, solid foundation of truth about God. And to do that, we've got to fully understand and know the truth about the early beginnings of the Bible, which would be Genesis chapter 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. And what I find is over time... Uh, Bible translators have injected words that's not in the original Hebrew or the original Greek manuscripts of Genesis. And now what we read is that God, okay, killed the first animal to make clothing, fur coats for Adam and Eve. And my joke is, well, there was no, it wasn't even wintertime. They didn't need fur coats. So no, God, in, the, in these original scriptures, guys, uh, it does not say that God killed an animal. Then it doesn't talk about how Abel actually killed a lamb as a sacrifice to God, okay? That's not in original scripture. What happens is translators start putting in their theology and adding words into scripture, and over time, it becomes a popular teaching, and we just roll with it and believe that's what was originally written in scripture. And so, but what I was saying is that uh, this J.D. Myers, he actually talks about how God did not kill an animal uh, to clothe Adam and Eve, nor did Abel kill a lamb and i was so shocked when he started talking about that because i've known that because i spent many many hours uh breaking into and breaking down specific words in both the hebrew uh manuscripts okay as well as the greek septuagint manuscripts and that's what i love about this because i know that many people are like well what's the big deal guys if we misunderstand the goodness of god from the beginning, we're going to assign the wrong nature and character to God, okay? If I think someone is a murderer, okay, I'm going to have a different opinion of them than if I think they are a loving, kind person, 
Okay, I'm going to have some guards up and some uh, trust issues with someone who I think is cold-hearted enough to murder an innocent animal because of what a human did. Okay, so enough about that. I just want you to know uh, this is an awesome little book. Uh, and again, we need to make sure that we are seeing God for who he really is and not what uh, people have believed and written about him. That's the key right there. Okay, so today for the rest of my time, what I want to do is I want to tell you, because on my last video I said I wanted to tell you a story about a woman I saw at Walmart. I had uh, two or three little errands to run. Okay, so I'm in, uh, I'm on a mission to find uh, uh, some shorts that Walmart has for four bucks a pair, just some work shorts to work outside, and if I get bleach on them or tear them up or whatever, get paint on them. Okay, so I, I'm getting out of the car to go in on my mission and I'm in Bolivar, Tennessee. I get out of my uh, little red uh, VW Beetle, my uh, convertible, right? And uh, as I'm, I'm walking toward Walmart, this lady pulls up in a real pretty kind of a uh, gun-colored blue. It's kind of a smoky blue color. And when she got out, I said, I just love the color of your vehicle. And she says, oh, well, thank you. I said, oh, I had one that color many years ago. And every time I see it, I just remember that vehicle, how much I love it, and I just love that color. And she looked at me. She said, you're in that little red car over there, aren't you? And I said, oh, yeah, that's my little fun car. Uh, I actually have an SUV at home, but I don't have one as pretty as yours. Mine's a dark gray. And, uh, but I told her that my little red car was just like a little fun car for me. And she says, well, you know, we all deserve to have a little fun car, some of us, right? And I said, well, you know, at 58, yes, ma'am, I deserve to have a fun little car to drive. And she looked at me and she said, oh, my goodness, you are kidding me. And I'm like, kidding you about what? Uh, and she said, you cannot be 58. And I said, oh, yeah. She said, girl, there is no way that you are that age. You, you no. And uh, she just kept on and on talking about that. And she said, how do you look so young? And she asked me like three times. I said, okay, so I really am going to tell you why one of the reasons I look as good as I do and I feel as good as I do and I have so much energy. I am a vegan. I don't believe in eating and nor do I eat any animals or animal byproducts. And she said, oh, get out of here. Something, you know, she was surprised. And I said, yes, ma'am, I am. And I haven't been a vegan very long, but I know that I feel so much younger and much better than I ever have. I've got so much more energy. But she told me, she said, no, I am in shock. Did you know this is a God thing? And I'm like, uh, okay. And she said, I've been praying about that. You know, I've been cutting down and not eating as much animals and stuff, and I'm I'm real close to being a vegetarian. But I think the Lord, the Lord has been talking to me, okay, about uh, going completely vegan, plant based. And I said, you know what? I knew that you were a believer when I met you. She said, oh, yes, I am. And I do know that the Lord sends people to us, and I know that he has sent you to me today. And did you know she and I started talking about this, and I told her a few of the different teachings I did about uh, that God's plan for us in Genesis chapter 1, verse 29, was for us to eat the plants, not the animals, that he gave us dominion, but dominion does not mean abuse and to kill. Dominion actually means to be caretakers and overseers, to take responsibility for the animals and the earth, and to be caregivers and caretakers. And uh, so we just stood and talked a little bit, and get this, I walked around with her around Walmart showing her all the different vegan selections, where she can find it, and she's putting stuff in her little uh, shopping cart with me. And uh, I spent probably a good 20 minutes just having a wonderful conversation with her, talking about uh, her what she likes to eat and what she don't like to eat and helping her figure that out. I even gave her my name and phone number, and I said, anytime you want to talk to me, you just give me a buzz. You can call me. Uh, you can reach me on Facebook. Uh, you can text me, whatever you're comfortable with. But this is where I want to go here today. You know, another thing, and I'm not going to talk about this because I don't want to go too long today. But two days later, I went to the Walmart in Oakland, Tennessee, the opposite direction, looking for some more of those little black cheap $4 shorts for me to use for work clothes around the house. And I'll be doggone. I walked in. My husband asked me if I could find some Beyond 
uh, beef or beyond burgers, uh, some, some sausage links. I go in there and the two stock girls that's standing in the fresh meat section, yeah, I call it the dead animal section, and I said, excuse me, ladies, I said, do, do you know if y'all carry the Beyond Beef, the fresh stuff that's over here where all the fresh meat is? And they both looked at me and said, no, we sure don't. And I said, okay, well, I didn't know if y'all would know what I'm talking about. It's the plant-based alternatives. And they're like, oh, yes, we know what it is. And they're like, we're both vegetarian, and we work out together, and we're going vegan too. We've been talking about how we can make that happen. Guys, it's so amazing. I'm not going out looking for people to try to convert them. It's like everywhere I go now, the Lord is putting people in my path and uh, letting me meet them and talk to them because I have knowledge about certain things that they don't know about yet, and I can share some of what I've learned about plant-based living. And so, listen, I'm going to wrap it up today and uh, call it a wrap-up and hop off here. But I would, uh, again, pray that you would consider maybe doing an experiment to find out what a plant-based lifestyle, Genesis 129, eating from the plants and leave the animals alone to live in peace, not abusing them, killing them, chopping them into pieces, or uh, taking byproducts from them, their milk from their babies, the eggs, which are their unborn, ha unhatched chickens, uh, just to pray about that, if you would, and maybe challenge yourself to try going a plant-based diet for a week or 10 days or a month and, and let your own body be a witness to you as to whether that's something that is beneficial to you. I know that it is extremely beneficial to me. It has been. I talk to a lot of people, and I just keep hearing the same thing. All of these different health issues go away. They, they stop uh, uh, having to take medicine. They're losing weight. They don't have diseases and sickness. They have more energy. They rest better. There's just so many benefits to checking it out and seeing if it's something that might be a benefit to you as an individual. Well, I'm going to hop off here, and I plan on staying on Facebook for the most of the week, doing a few teachings here and there as well. Uh, but I am on the road having a big time with my kid Courtney. So I'm signing off. I love you, and I will see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye.